to the situation in the Middle East now, and a group of 30 British medical professionals have sent an open letter to the Prime Minister and Foreign Secretary calling for a ban on arms sales to Israel and a range of other humanitarian interventions. While well, all of the people who signed the letter, supported and coordinated by the International Centre of Justice for Palestinians, have volunteered in Gaza, providing medical care there. Well, joining me now is Dr James Smith, an emergency medical doctor and signatory to that open letter. He joins me live now. Uh, good afternoon to you. Um, I wonder first if you could share what compelled you to be a part of this uh, and write and sign this letter. Well, I, I, as, as you say, Simon, I witnessed firsthand um, the, the full extent of, of Israel's violence in Gaza. And I think for those of us that have witnessed what is happening there, who are awake to what is happening there, it's incumbent upon us to use whatever means are at our disposal to, uh, to, to speak truth to what's happening and to apply some form of political pressure. Uh, up until now, very little um, impact has been achieved with other measures. So really at this stage, um, we, we're trying to use any and all means at our disposal to press for serious political and diplomatic engagement with, with what's happening currently. Uh, you, you asked for a range of, uh, as I said, humanitarian is issues as well as the ending of sales of arms. It says any solution to this problem requires the withholding of military, economic and diplomatic support from Israel. It's quite unusual for uh, medical professionals to ask for something like that. Why is that? Humanitarian work has limits. Um, there, there are no humanitarian solutions to what are inherently political problems. One of my experiences working in Gaza was that as a medical worker, as a humanitarian worker, my ability to actually do anything of any meaningful impact was incredibly limited while the violence continued uh, with such intensity uh, and throughout the entirety of the Gaza Strip. Um, we can call for more humanitarian access, but that alone will not achieve achieve any tangible benefit uh, for Palestinians living in Gaza without uh, an immediate end to the violence. Uh, and by that, we're talking about, of course, an, an immediate ceasefire. But when we talk about an arms embargo, that's not only in relation to what's currently happening, but of course is also in relation to the ongoing occupation of Palestine. Uh, and look, you, you mentioned there the humanitarian situation, and that is also included in your letter. You mentioned all land crossings between Gaza and Israel uh, to be opened, full unrestricted access to be created for medical, surgical professionals. Is that not happening? Humanitarian access is currently incredibly limited. Um, since the Israeli occupation forces invaded the south of Gaza, uh, the Rafah border crossing has been completely destroyed, is not currently in use. Very limited numbers of humanitarian workers are currently able to enter and exit Gaza via the Kerem Abu Salem crossing uh, in the southeast of Gaza. And the volume of humanitarian assistance entering into Gaza now is, is pitiful at best. It is far, far below what is needed in order to simply sustain human life at this, at this moment in time. OK, so, so give our viewers an understanding of, uh, of what's behind this. If you, I mean, our viewers are not there on the ground. International journalists are not allowed. We're relying on the, the Gazans that are living, experiencing this and reporting on it. And, and we very rarely get picture out. We have our own team there here on Sky News. Uh, describe to our viewers what kind of uh, injuries you're seeing and what kind of care you were able or not able to give. I saw some of the most horrific trauma-related injuries that I have ever seen. People with um, burns, full thickness burns to almost the entire body surface area, um, so severe and so horrific that you couldn't discern facial features. Um, those burns were often among um, children. I remember vividly um, one preteen girl in particular who died on the floor of the resuscitation room. Uh, I've seen children with multiple traumatic amputations. Um, these are incredibly uh, horrific injuries. Uh, and, and the means that were available to us, the, the means at our disposal were incredibly limited. At times we ran out of sterile gauze, we didn't have access to IV fluids, the blood banks were uh, often very, very close to running out of blood. Um, it, it was a miracle that people survived 
um, uh, under those conditions. And it's really a testament to the sheer determination and, uh, and expertise of Palestinian healthcare workers um, that, that people are surviving under these conditions. Yeah, I've got to say, it's very hard to follow up what you've just said with another question. But I will ask you, what are you hoping for to achieve? Because lots of people write open letters like this. Are you trying to engage with the government? Are you developing this further? What next? I think we want to expose. We, of course, want the, the government to take serious political and diplomatic action against Israel, but we also want to expose uh, the inconsistencies in their narrative. They cannot call for a ceasefire. They cannot uh, uh, feign concern for what is happening to the people uh, of Palestine that are living in Gaza and, of course, throughout occupied Palestine without taking serious political action. Uh, and one of those actions, of course, is an immediate and sustained arms embargo against the Israeli state.